In this lesson, we're going to learn about some ice modeling concepts, the terminology, and some of the nodes we're going to be using. So I've just opened up my scene zero to begin. We just have a normal uh, poly mesh here inside of Softimage. So ice modeling or ice procedural modeling is all about creating, modifying, and editing the points and parts of a mesh. So this is uh, sort of a new part of ICE that was introduced with Softimage 2012, and it really gives us a great, great amount of detail over our models and over our scenes in general. So to begin with, let's take a look at some of the new things we'll be seeing, discussing, and talking about with ICE modeling. So on my mesh here, I've added a attribute display. So let's select that and hit Enter to bring up our properties. And let's now take a look at all of the new attributes we have access to on our meshes. So these are, again, all accessible inside of our ice trees. So we have uh, quite a lot of new attributes to uh, get acquainted with. So we have uh, things like the edge position, the, uh, some really nice things like edge length, which goes in and tells us the length of every single edge on our mesh. Let's see here. We also have access to the polygons or the uh, polygonal data. So we have things like the polygons position data. We have uh, something called an index. And the index is actually really important. So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about this. Uh, when we're modeling, we usually select a number of faces, edges, or vertices, and then modify them, either moving them, scaling them, rotating them, extruding them, smoothing them, so on and so forth. So in ice modeling, we have to use a very similar approach in that we need to uh, understand and find indices, or the index, of the polygons, edges, or vertices that we want to edit. So here we can see the polygon indices for all of our model. Now, whenever we modify our model or modify the topology, these indexes will change. So it's not like a point cloud where it's a very fixed system. These will adjust themselves and rearrange themselves every time we change the topology or any time we make a change to the number of points, edges, or faces. So let's just keep looking here. So we have, again, quite a few things under the polygon. We can see the area, which is another quite useful attribute to have access to, and that, again, is built in. And down here near the bottom, we have our vertices. So we have our vertex index and uh, some other things like the vertex uh, two polygons. And this one's another interesting attribute because it's actually giving us an array per vertex of the polygon indexes that are connected to it. Now, if that was a little bit alien so far, uh, let's not worry about it. All we need to know is that a polygon edge or vertex index simply tells ICE which one of these components we want to modify. So now that we've gotten a little bit more familiar with the new attributes we have access to, let's create our first modeling ICE tree. So I'm going to go back to my viewers here, and I have my ice tree window and my mesh selected. And so here, let's go create ice tree. Now, we need to make sure the ice tree is under the modeling stack. So we do not want to create a simulated ice tree because that will not work with the modeling node. So again, just create an ice tree on our mesh. Now, the common way to do ice modeling is to actually create a new holder object or a new empty mesh. And this is, again, something new in 2012. We can go up to Model, uh, Get Primitive, Polygon Mesh, and down here at the bottom we now have an empty. And this is usually the workflow. We uh, try not to modify the existing topology too much, but instead absorb or clone in the topology into an empty model. So then we can modify it without having to worry about changing our original data. But for our case, let's now take a look at some of the options or some of the new nodes we have access to to begin modeling here inside of ICE. So under our Tools tab, we have, of course, all of our usual, but we also have a new topology. And here we can see we have a lot of new things to uh, discover and a lot of ways we can modify our meshes. We can you know, add in various components, we can delete various components, we can extrude, and we can modify by subdividing, splitting, and getting other topologies.
Now we don't only have access to tools, we also have new tasks. So let's set our task from deformation down to topology, and you can see we now have a lot of new things to discover. So uh, throughout this course, again, we're going to be looking at various nodes here, of course with uh, <laughs> the large number of new nodes. We're not going to be able to cover all of them, but we're going to try to get to the ones that are most important and that you'll use most often while working on ice modeling. But as always, I really recommend exploring these menus and just taking a quick look at what we have access to because it'll give us a really nice idea of what we can and cannot do. So let's grab a node here now. So let's grab something like a modifier, which has a few of these tools uh, bundled into one compound, so it makes it a little easier to create a change. So we see we have a lot of different options here. So let's grab something like Apply Delete Polygon. And here we have a new data type, the topology data type, which we see here is a light gray or a almost white port. And so you'll be seeing this on several nodes. Uh, many of these ICE modeling tools now uh, accept and set this topology attribute. So let's execute this, plug this into our ICE tree, and Initially, nothing really is going to look like it's going to happen. But what it's doing is it's going in and it's looking at this array for an index to delete. So instead of an array, let's do something like an integer array. And we can see immediately that our polygon that was uh, originally at index, index 0 is now gone. And we can change this by changing this integer array. We can see here that we can essentially iterate through our mesh and delete the faces of these various components. Now, if we want to delete the first five, we can, of course, pass in an array or type in something like a string away. So let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And now we can see that all of these faces have now been deleted. So as you can see here, ice modeling is a very large subject and there's a lot to cover inside of it. But if you've used ice before, this is going to be uh, pretty easy. There's a few rules that we need to take care of and a few things we need to uh, make sure we do. But beyond that, we have all the power of ice now attachable and editable inside of our models, which really opens up ice into a whole new realm of creativity. So with that said, let's now come in and let's just do a small sample project in the next lesson where we'll learn how to delete or keep polygon faces or polygons with a null. So in this lesson, we covered a lot of topics. We looked at some of the new attributes we have access to, learned about how we could add an ice tree into the modeling stack, and we learned a little bit about the new topology nodes that we have access to. So in the next lesson, we'll jump in and begin creating an ice tree.